takfir means calling other Muslims kafir. This is called takfir. Now, there are takfiri ideologies which have now completely, it seems, taken over. And how did it start? It, is, it started from, it has a long history. It is started from Ibn Taymiyyah, who after the Mongol invasion of Baghdad, the, the, the country was in a difficult situation. The Mongols had accepted Islam, but they were also following some of their own customs, etc. So Ibn Taymiyyah, who was a great scholar, no doubt, he started this system in which he became very violent. And for the first time, he, in, uh, in a way, initiated this system of violence. Now, I'll, I'll give you just a couple of examples of, from his verdicts, that, which are available even on the net, I believe, on, in Majmu al-Fatawa. Now, it is known from the Salaf Imams that takfir to be considered non-Muslim be issued against anyone that says that Quran is created. Now, this is, this is I will have to explain a little bit this term. There is a controversy whether Quran is a created book or uncreated book. What it means, it is a very, very significant thing. Now, you may think that I am just theologizing or being amateurish about theologizing, but this is very important to understand this, which may appear to be a, a theological concept, but essentially, if Quran is created or uncreated, this is something which influences our life today. If Quran is created, which means that it is a compilation of the revelations that came from time to time to guide the Prophet. This compilation was done by human beings, which is a fact of life. It was even done after the Prophet's demise, the exact translation. And it, in fact, it was done finally in the time of the third Khalifa, third Caliph. The first Caliph did start the process. The second caliph carried it on, but finally it was standardized in Prophet Usman's time, who was the third caliph. Now, so it is a book which is a creature of God, which was created by God. It is God's speech, but it is a creation of God. It cannot be God by itself. But uh, so many imams, and I mean practically every madrasa today, teaches that Quran is an uncreated book, which is that Quran has always existed. So in a sense, Quran becomes a rival to God. So the same people who say that God is one and who will not accept any rivalry for God at any cost, also say that Quran is uncreated, which means Quran has always existed. Uh, that it is, it is a, it's a copy lies in, in heaven. And this Quran that we have is just a copy of that. The original is in heaven. If that is so, now why it is important for us? Let me explain that to you. If it is important for us because since Quran was, is a compilation of verses that came from time to time to guide the Prophet for that time. See, initially in Makkah, when, when the Prophet acquired prophethood, he was being given universal verses, verses for universal use, like God is one, that you should speak the truth, like the highest virtue in Islam is taqwa, which is piety and righteousness, and taqwa, what is taqwa, and good deeds, and the value of good deeds, and things like that, which are of universal significance. Then, after 13 years, the Prophet, uh, came into a situation when he had to migrate to other city to survive. Then, even, after, then, even, even then, after two years, a uh, prophet was attacked, and his, his companions, everybody, were attacked from Makkah. Now, they had no option but to defend themselves. So, in this situation, God asked them, permitted them to fight, to defend themselves. Then, they, they also, they were encouraged to fight. They were also told that you have to fight so that churches and synagogues and temples and monasteries where God is remembered are, are preserved. So Muslims were asked to fight not for the freedom of religion of Islam, but for freedom of religion per se. 
Muslims have forgotten that today. If they, if they remember that, the first fight they would engage in today would be fighting for the minorities in Pakistan, minorities in Bangladesh, minorities living in Saudi Arabia, which does not allow a single church or a temple to be built. We should be fighting for that because this is what Quran asks us, asks us to do. We were, fight for, uh, we were allowed to fight, permitted to fight for the first time in order to save, safeguard religious freedom per se, but we don't. Now, so there are many verses in which we were asked to fight, we were asked to kill, we were asked to kill the polytheists, we, we were asked to do things like that. Now, those verses are not of universal significance. They were meant for that particular time. But if Quran is an uncreated book, which is if Quran is a book which has always existed, which is a, in heaven and we have a copy, so what that means is that every word and comma and full stop in Quran becomes of universal significance. Which is what is being used today by the terrorists to fight this war. They tell our children, they take our children away from us. They tell them, see, this is in Quran. You have to fight and kill. Those verses were meant for that particular time. So this is a very, very important issue, whether Quran is created or uncreated. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah said that if somebody says that Quran is created, then what you should do? Anyone that says that Quran is created, he must repent or otherwise be killed. So this violence, this element of killing of Muslims just because they disagree with you on a theological point it started with Ibn Taymiyyah. Ibn Taymiyyah, then there are other, other verses as well. For instance, one very simple thing is that when we pray, uh, we say that I intend to pray this, this kind of prayer. I mean, I, we just feel that. Now somebody says that uh, intention loudly. If somebody says that loudly, he should be asked to repent, and if he doesn't repent, then he should be killed. This was the verdict of Ibn Taymiyyah, which exists today. Something like that. You see, can you imagine something like that? Now, this Ibn Taymiyyah is being taught in our madrasas, in early Hadithi madrasas. Almost the entire text is based on Ibn Taymiyyah's revelations. Saudi texts are based on Ibn Taymiyyah. Saudi texts are taught not only in Saudi Arabia, but across the world, they are sent and distributed for free. And this is what is reaching our children and is brainwashing them into becoming, uh, some of them becoming radicals. And this is what is leading to radicalization.